This is the 10th video on first order modelling. This video focuses on numerical examples for mixing tanks. So we're going to build on the previous video which showed you how to model a simple mixing tank. And this video will give two numerical examples. One straightforward one where there's no reaction which builds directly on the previous video. And then a second example which introduces a reaction and shows how some of the modelling and the numerical details will need to change. We will use deviation variables for both examples. Now just a reminder of what we did in the previous video. For a mixing tank, the underlying model comes from a mass balance. So you look at the accumulation in the tank as a um, function of time or the rate of change of the accumulation of, of A in the tank. And then you say that that's got to be equal to how much of A is coming in minus how much of A is going out plus how much A is being generated and how much A is being used up. And we've assumed that the flow in and the flow out are the same. So the volume in the tank of solvent is constant. Now, what we showed in the previous video is doing this, you can come up with two simple models if you assume there's no reaction. So if I cross those two terms, assume there's no reaction, then you can either get this model in terms of the concentration of chemical A, so T dCA dT plus CA equals CA0, with T equal to the volume of the tank divided by the flow rate in, which equals the flow rate out, and you find that the gain of the model is 1. We also showed that if you use deviation variables, you get this model down here. And you notice, in fact, it's the same time constant model because with no reaction, you have linear dynamics and superposition. So unsurprisingly, you get the same dynamics. So a numerical example then. Reminder of the assumptions, the tank's well mixed, the solvent and product have the same density, the flow in is constant and equal to the flow out, and there's no reaction involving A. So let's give some data. We're going to let the flow be 0.0585 meters cubed per minute, the volume of the tank 2.1 meters cubed, the initial concentration in the tank 0.925 moles per meter cubed, the concentration in the inflow, and you'll notice because the gain of the model is 1, we expect in steady state the concentration in the tank to be the same as the concentration in the inflow. So you'll notice both of these say 0.925 as expected. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do a step increase in the concentration in the inflow, again using 0.925. So in essence, we're doubling the concentration of the inflow. So we've assumed the system is initially at steady state before we apply the step change in the input concentration. And we will solve this using deviation variables about the steady state. So what we'll do is we'll set the system at the steady state, um, the steady state being given here as based at 0.925, and then we'll use deviation variables to find out what happens relative to that steady state. So here's the deviation model. V over F0 times DCA dash DT plus CA dash equals CA0 dash. And what we'll do next is we'll put in some of the numbers we've been given. So we've got V equals 2.1, F0 equals 0 0.085, and CA0, uh, a step in CA0 is 0 0.925. So there's the numbers, 2.1 over 0 0.085 times DCA dash DT plus CA dash equals 0.925 because that's the magnitude of the step. Next, I'm going to take Laplace transforms of this equation. Now, there are other videos which cover how to do Laplace in detail, so we're going to do this relatively concisely, and you should look at those other videos if you want to do these steps slightly more slowly. So taking Laplace of this differential equation and then rearranging to solve for CA dash, I get this, CA dash of S equals 0.925 divided by S times 1 plus 2.1 S over 0.085. And I that's the um, and I've also assumed in here 
that I can approximate, well not approximate, I can write the step in CA0, a CA0 dash of S equals 0 0.925 over S, which again is standard. So what I've done here is I've just rewritten what's on the previous slide. So that's just an exact rewrite of what was on the previous slide, but it's not in what you call pole zero form. And if you're going to do inverse Laplace, it tends to be easier to put things in pole zero form. So to go from here to here, what I've done is simply changed this Laplace transform into pole zero form. So you'll see now I've got S plus 0 0.085 over 21. And in order to do that, I had to also multiply the numerator by 0 0.085 over 2.1. Now I can do this by inspection, but uh, you can do it more slowly if you wish. When you do the inverse Laplace of this, you'll get CA dash of T equals 0 0.925 times 1 minus E to the minus 0 0.085 over 2.1 T. If I just do a little sketch in case anyone's wondering what that looks like, then obviously you've got a steady state of 0 0.925 and you're going to tend to it. And the time constant is going to be 2.1 over 0 0.085, which I'm not going to calculate, but you'll have a essentially a behavior a bit like that. Now, if you remember, this is a deviation variable. We're doing the deviation about the steady state. So if you want the actual concentration, you need to add the steady state back in. So that's all that's happened on this line here. You'll see that we've added the steady state back in to say the total concentration is the steady state plus the deviation. Second example. Now in this particular example, we've had all the same assumptions as before, and they're summarized here in bullet point one, but we're going to modify one assumption. We're going to allow that there is a reaction going on inside this tank where the chemical A is consumed at a rate RA. So the units of RA are moles per meter cubed uh, per minute. Um, and we're going to define RA using this formula here. So it's 0 0.2 times the concentration plus 0 0.1 times the concentration squared. So we want to now say, OK, how do I remodel this tank now that I've got this reaction taking place? Here's some data that we're going to use later. So the volume of the tank will make it 2, the flow in 0 0.1 meters cubed per minute, and the input concentration uh, initially 0 0.9 moles per meter cubed. And what we're going to do is apply a step increase in the input concentration of a magnitude of 0 0.6 moles per meter cubed. But we will assume that the system is initially at steady state before we apply this step change. And what we want to do now is solve for CA, the concentration in the tank, using deviation variables. And this will be different from the previous example because of this reaction. So we're going to have to go back and do a little bit of the modeling again before we get to the solution. First thing we're going to need to do then is find the steady state. Now, because there's a reaction going on in this tank, the steady state concentration in the tank will not match the concentration of the inflow. OK, hopefully that's um, intuitively obvious to you. And so we're going to have to redo this mass balance. And if you remember the mass balance equation, we basically said the rate of change of the amount of A in the tank, that's given by that thing I've just circled there, depends upon how much A is coming in, how much A is going out, and how much A is being consumed. So you'll notice I've added on an RA V times MA. So that's the a mass of A which is being used up in the reaction per minute. And that's the new term which we didn't have um, in the previous examples because the previous examples had no reaction. So let's see what happens by adding this extra term. First of all, what I'm going to do is eliminate the mass. Now that's standard, so I can cross that cross that, cross that, and cross that, because it's a common factor throughout. And let's see what we get. So I've now got V dCA dt equals F0 CA0 minus F1 CA minus 0.2 CA plus 0.1 CA squared all times V. Next, 
what I'm going to do is note that F0 equals F1 and I'm going to expand RA with the formula I had on the previous slide. So we do that and you'll notice I've divided through by F0 um, to uh, make the formula a bit simpler or put it rather in time constant form. So I've got V over F0 times DCA dt equals CA0 minus CA minus 0.2V of F0 CA minus 0.1V of F0 CA squared. So you'll notice we've plugged in um, the expansion for RA. Now one more step before we go to the next slide just to simplify this a bit. You should notice that we've got V over F equals 20. So what I can do is I can cross this term here and say that's going to be 4. And I can cross this term here and say that's going to be 2. And you'll see by doing that I've now got a far simpler form and also this one over here is going to be 20. Steady state, the derivative is 0. So we can use the equation we've just derived and the observation that the steady state the derivative is 0 in order to solve for the steady state conditions in the tank. So you'll notice we've essentially rewritten the equation we had on the, at the bottom of the previous slide but we've added in the observation that the derivative is 0 so we've written equal 0 so it means this term here must equal 0 at steady state. Now we were also given that initially before anything happened the steady state input concentration was 0 0.9 so I can stick that value in there and then you'll see we end up with a simple quadratic so if I write that um, so you can see this is just a quadratic in the steady state concentration in the tank and of course we can all, all solve quadratics okay it's a non-simple one you'll have to use the quadratic formula but you'll end up with this answer here CAS equals 0.169 so hopefully it's really clear to you that the concentration in the tank is much less than the concentration of the inflow and this is what you expect because in the tank there's a reaction taking place so A is being consumed and so the concentration is less. Now by the way when you solve the quadratic you will of course get two solutions but one of the solutions is negative which clearly is meaningless. Next then we need to go and look at our deviation variables so we're going to do deviation about the steady state so I've defined CA dash equals CA minus CAS and we've got CAS we've just done it here is 0.169 and CAO dash equals CAO minus CAO comma S where CAOS is 0.9 so that's the standard definition of a deviation variable next what I'll do is I'll substitute these deviation models variables into the model I derived so this was the model we derived two slides ago okay without deviation variables we said this is the model for how the tank behaves and of course we're a bit concerned because it's got this quadratic term so it's not a simple first order ODE and what we'd like to do is linearize it but first anyway let's do the deviation variables about the steady state and see what happens so all I'm going to do is take this CA and put it in here and take this CA0 and put it in here okay and see what happens but of course wherever there's CA I'm going to write this CA dash plus CAS and wherever there's CAO I'll write CAO dash plus CAOS so that's what I've done here you'll see it's a very straightforward substitution no tricks so I've written each variable in terms of its steady state plus a deviation variable but now comes the clever bit I already know and I'll squeeze it in the top here that C a o comma s minus 5 c a comma s minus 2 c a comma s squared equals 0 because that's how I define the steady state so if you look at this particular formula you'll see that I can cancel this term this term and the c a s squared from this term so having done that, removing the terms which I know add to zero, this is what you get left with. 20 dCA dash dt equals CAO dash, CAO dash minus 5 CA dash minus 2 CA dash squared 
minus 4 CA dash CAS. So you notice all the steady state terms have gone apart from this one here. OK, and again, that's what you will expect. What we want to do now is use a linearization technique to remove any nonlinear terms that are left. And <coughs> you'll see there's one nonlinear term left. It's this one here, the minus 2 CA dash squared. So in essence, you can say this is a bit, bit like doing a Taylor series, but um, this is what we've got. We've got 5 CA dash plus 2 CA dash squared plus 4 CA dash CAS, and we want to linearize that about CA dash equals 0. So if you like, treat this as taking a Taylor series, and I will let you do this by yourself in slower time. But in essence, what happens, because you're linearizing about CA dash equals 0, is this quadratic term disappears. So the linearization of x squared about x equals 0 has no x's. OK, it's basically flat. So what you get left with is 5 plus 4 CAS times CA dash. Now, I already know that CAS equals 0.169. I did that on a previous slide. And therefore, when I substitute that in, I get this 5.675 CA dash. And hence, this is a summary. Our full model was given like this. So that was the full model with no approximation, including everything, but written in terms of deviation variables about the steady state. If I then linearized, so this is the linearized model, and taking out the quadratic form, what you get left with is you'll see a simple first order model, 20 dCA dash to T, is approximately equal to CAO dash minus 5.675 CA dash. And you notice I've used the approximate because it's a linearized form. It's not exact. And then finally, I'm going to write this in time constant form. So that's what I've done on this last line. So I've got 20 over 5.675 times dCA dash dt plus CA dash is approximately equal to 1 over 5.675 CAO dash. You'll notice the gain here is no longer 1, and again, that's not surprising because of the reaction. Now let's solve for this. Um, you'll remember, if you go back several slides, that we said we wanted a step change in the input concentration of 0 0.6. So I've got this model here with a step change in input of 0 0.6. Now if you look at the videos on first order responses, you'll see that I can write the solution by inspection. So that's what I've done here. I've said CA dash of T equals 0 0.6 over 5.675 times 1 minus E to the minus 5.675 over 20 times T. So if that's a bit quick for you, go and look at the videos on first order responses um, with time constant forms and you'll see you can write it by inspection. And finally, if I want to get the actual concentration in the tank, then I add the deviation variable to the original steady state. So I get CA equals 0 0.169 plus CA dash.